Hello, good afternoon, good evening, good morning and welcome. It's Nurse Richard the Wax Wizard. Thank you for joining me for this latest episode. This is a really good looking procedure. Um, he had a nice big wide ear canal, not too many hairs in the way and it just always looks really satisfying, one like this. Now when I first looked at this, I, um, I thought oh, it's going to be easy this. It just looks like a few little flakes, out it'll come, jobs are good and Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. <laughs> but it really wasn't. Um, that's why it's a, it's a bit longer, it's about 10 minutes long, I think. And the reason is, um, it just comes away in flakes, and I mean tiny, tiny flakes. Now, when I first removed this, I could already see in the background, I thought, oh, hello, what's going on down there? Are you watching um, on there? Yeah. Because this chap had went to, um, to see an audiologist to have a hearing test. And it's an audiologist, I'm... Uh, uh, I recently met and recommend and we recommend each other and she said yeah one ear's not too bad just a few little bits in there but your other one we need to get you get that removed before we can get you fitted with any hearing aids um, I can see why as well now I have a few theories why it looks like this and why it came away like this in flakes because this gentleman had psoriasis um, which can lead to uh, excess skin production um, it can quite commonly happen in the ear as well. Um, and I thought after the larger plug here, which was just in front of the eardrum, full size tube, because I think it was needed to be honest, because it was a, a fairly chunky piece. Um, but what it left behind was so many dry flakes um, on top of the eardrum. Now you can see it only looks like a couple there, doesn't it? But. <laughs> I must have had to go in about, down to the fine end tube, must have had to go in about 10 times, maybe even more, because each tiny little flake came away one by one. So it, it, it took a bit of time, but bear with it. <laughs> bear with it, it's a, it's a satisfying watch, I promise. <laughs> Not all look as aesthetically, aesthetically pleasing as, as others, and this is one of those that really does. It really does, got some really nice images in it. Uh, so I think you're going to enjoy it. The second one, there's a wonderful peel in it as well. I mean, there's a little peel here that I'm trying to get hold of. But the second one, there doesn't look like there's much in it, but there's a really satisfying peel in it. So stay tuned for that. I know you're going to enjoy it. And look at this peel as well. Beautiful. Now, I'd put, I, it looked like it'd been old. It's because when he came to me, it was already dry as a bone. Um, so even before I started the procedure, I put some oil in. I knew it was going to need it. You could just tell by how dry it was, uh, and it did help. It did help to some degree, but yeah. unfortunately, it didn't bind these flakes together. I wasn't expecting it to, um, and they just came away tiny bit by tiny bit. Um, and I think you, you'll see what happens here. There you go, one flake. <laughs> it's very fine and delicate and difficult work. This as well. Not only that, it's you can see his ear canal kind of goes uphill and then downhill towards the end and I was having real trouble towards the end figuring out especially as I was trying to get get uh, over the dip there obviously these tubes are straight um, I'm not a believer in bending them um, it was difficult to, to, to figure out which angle to put the endoscope at because you don't want to bump them into each other that's the last thing you want to do uh, but to try and keep them far enough apart that they don't bump into each other but you still get a good view while you put the suction tube down I know I'm boring, you know, with the, <laughs> but it, it's more complicated. What you see here looks fairly straightforward, but what's going on behind here, where my hands are and where I've had to position them uh, to get to that point is a lot more complicated than I think you can appreciate. It really is. Yeah. See, here's where I'm just like figuring out where I need to put it because well, I need to lift the endoscope high enough so I can see down that dip. Um, but if I lift it too high, because you introduce the um, the tube over the top uh, and if you put the endoscope too high you can't get the tube over the top of it and they'll start bumping into each other so it's a, a really tricky thing to do it really is a couple of bonus hairs came out with that as well <laughs> I think they were from his head <laughs> um, excited night in our house last night I had a very excited um, Mrs. Wizard, uh, and I'll tell you why. Because um, 
it's all she's got a well, everyone's got a bucket list, haven't they? And it's always been on her bucket list to go and see oh, the Northern Lights. Which, uh, if you don't know what they are, it's um, well, I don't know how to explain the science behind it, uh, but it's you know, the, the, the Aurora Borealis, and it's more commonly seen, obviously, uh, really far up in the northern hemisphere. A lot of people go to Iceland around here for it, and I've always thought that I would have to pay for a holiday to Iceland for it <laughs> to go and see it. Now we did. My sister did used to live in Aberdeen, in the very far northeast uh, of Scotland. We were always hoping, whenever we went there. We'd be able to see it because it's not uncommon to see to see it up there. You know, it illuminates the sky. These greens and pinks and reds. It's a really beautiful sight. Um, and I believe there's been a few sightings a bit further down south because we're in the north of England. But it's really rare you get any sightings of it uh, down here. Um, and I think that the, the one time in the last few years that they've had a really good sighting of it, uh, we were actually on holiday. <laughs> in fact, twice uh, they've had two sightings this year. Once when we were uh, down south on a trip somewhere, I can't even remember what we were doing. Uh, and then the other time was when we were on holiday out of the country, and so she was <laughs> she was absolutely fuming. That all her friends, all she was seeing on her on her social media was pictures of people literally in their gardens taking pictures of the Northern Lights, because I believe it was quite impressive. Um, and anyway, so she, she's a bit of a geek like this. She, she loves a bit of um, astronomy and all that kind of things. And she gets these notifications when it might be possible to see it. So she said, you know, she got a notification last night, quite late, quite late last night, um, that it might be possible to see if you go in a, a place with no light pollution uh, around our house. But obviously there's, we're on a, an estate where there is a lot of lampposts, a lot of light pollution, but there's a lot of countryside nearby. So her and a friend and my daughter, they went out and they uh, managed to find a field in the middle of nowhere with no light pollution and managed to see the northern lights. Um, now I'll try and, I will ask her to send me a picture actually, and I'll try and see if I can um, share it in this video. Uh, As I'm uh, <laughs> narrating this, I haven't got those pictures, but when I'm editing it, I'll maybe try and get some pictures and I'll, uh, I'll maybe, I'll either put them above me, that might be quite distracting actually, so I'll put them at the end. Um, but yeah, it was quite amazing, the, the images that they got. And so it saved me a lot of money because I don't have to take it to Iceland anymore to go and see them. So I was more than made up with that. So I, I was a happy boy as well. <laughs> Apparently they might, I didn't go with them. Um, I just, I was uh, rugby training with the, with the lad, so I, I couldn't go. Um, but she said it might well even happen later on tonight. I said, this is recorded a couple of weeks in advance, so if you're thinking about going out in the north of England, you've missed it, it's too late. Um, but she said it might well happen again tonight, so I might well go with her tonight and see if I can see that myself. I believe you can see it even better um, when you, uh, uh, camera phones are really advanced these days, aren't they? If you put it on night mode, and fa in fact, sometimes I believe that you can take a picture of the sky on night mode on these fancy cameras and you'll be able to see it, but you couldn't actually see it with the naked eye. But where she went, she said you, you could see with the naked eye. So she was well impressed with that. Um, and yeah, well, I don't know why, whenever I heard the word Aurora Borealis, it just makes me think of Neil Young's Paul Carter song. I don't know why. This is the first line in that song, and I absolutely love Neil Young. Um, one of my favourite artists. If you haven't heard of him, go and check him out. Go and listen to his, his Unplugged album. It's one of the most beautiful pieces uh, of music you'll ever hear. Um, oh, what a lyricist. In fact, that, that song, Paul Contest, and it, someone once said, um, well, quite a lot of people say that the film Avatar was basically stolen from Poker Hunters, isn't it? <laughs> and I'd never seen Poker Hunters before, but I've seen Avatar and I watched it back and I'm like, do you know what? <laughs> They've totally robbed this. <laughs> Is the gorgeous peel I was going to tell you about. Now, again, it didn't look like much when I first started, but it all pulls down from the roof of the air canal and pretty much comes out in one bit. Yeah, look at that. You see what I mean about it being a really aesthetically pleasing and good looking procedure. And obviously I dial up the sharpness and the clarity. You know, I do a, a fair amount of work on these videos. Um, it's not, this, this isn't what it looks like as I'm doing it, but uh, you can sharpen up the images, change the exposure, the contrast, it's kind of complicated to explain. 
Um, but you really get some beautiful images if you, if you can work hard enough on it. And I, I spend a lot of time working hard on getting the clarity in the images as good as I can do. It's not always possible. If you've got an oily hair here, it is what it is. But I do try my best to provide some nice images for you. And see there's a little pool of oil in there. I've seen a lot of people going down in there and suctioning that out, which you can do. And absolutely no problem with that at all. What's much easier, ask the patient to do that. It'll fall out. <laughs> so that's what they did. If you wonder why I've left the oil in there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Found it just as satisfying as I did. Uh, but for now, take care of yourself. And I will see you later. I will put some pictures by the side of you now, by the way, if I remember to do it in the edit. <laughs> if not, don't worry about it. But for now, take care of yourself. And I'll see you soon. Ta-da.